Welcome to Explore the Earl Scruggs Center. This is Mary Beth Martin. So I want to give you a brief overview of the In These Hills Gallery before we dig into a piece of information that you can find there. This gallery gives you, an, gives you some early history of Cleveland County, including the pivotal role the Battle of Kings Mountain played in the Revolutionary War. Um, you can find an exhibit on the importance of cotton to the county, the evolution of the banjo, which is another wonderful ex exhibit. Um, there's information about Earl's early life and the Scruggs family. And then there's also the Common Threads table, which is a wonderful resource that's full of hours of information, of video, of documents, photos, and recordings of music and musicians from the region, different styles of music, different instruments and influences. Some of the musicians who had a great influence on Earl's music were Charlie Poole, Rex Brooks, Mac Woolbright, and Snuffy Jenkins. But today I'm going to share some information about Charlie Poole, who was a legendary North Carolina musician and, and during his time really the most well-known banjo player in North Carolina. He was born in 1892 in Randolph County and he was raised in a textile community. He was interested in music from a young age, but unfortunately his family was unable to afford lessons or an instrument, but still young Charlie learned how to play the banjo as a boy. A baseball accident led to the development of his unique three-finger style. The story goes that he wanted to show off and catch a baseball without a glove, and as a result, he suffered a broken thumb. It never healed properly, and so he had to adapt his style of playing. And his style of playing was a predecessor to the Scrugg style, or the style that's popular in bluegrass today. Poole spent much of his adult life working in the textile mills, but he was also known as a rambler with a wild spirit, and he traveled around the region performing as a busker. In 1917, he formed the band the North Carolina Ramblers with Posey Rohrer, a fiddle player, and his future brother-in-law. In 1925, the North Carolina Ramblers landed a contract with Columbia Records and recorded the song, Don't Let Your Deal Go Down Blues, and it sold over 100,000 copies. And this was pretty impressive considering a successful country recording at the time sold between 5,000 and 10,000 copies. Their second recording sold 60,000 copies. And then at that time, both the North Carolina Ramblers and Columbia Records knew that they had a hit. So Don't Let Your Deal Go Down Blues and other North Carolina Rambler songs have been recorded by many artists through the years, including Flat and Scruggs. The North Carolina Ramblers remained a popular band until 1931, when Poole passed away at the young age of 39 from a heart attack. So we're going to post a few links to some additional bio information and recordings of Charlie Poole and the North Carolina Ramblers. I encourage you to check it out and learn more about him. And then also, you're welcome to add a comment below on your favorite North Carolina Rambler song. Thanks for tuning in to Explore the Earl Scruggs Center. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or visit our website for more resources and information about our exhibitions, programs, and events.